So you're making two thousand dollars. We can roll that out twenty-four thousand dollars every year. Great. Not a lot to play with, and not a lot I would advise you to spend on marketing at that point, right? Because there's just not there's not a lot, right? But what we want to understand is, given the opportunity that you see, because you obviously see an opportunity. If we could get this website right, if we could get your look right, if we could get your marketing right, how many pairs could you be selling a month, right? So can we go from four a month to 20 a month? And are they still $500 a pair? And if so, we can start to do some math and we can backwards engineer what investment would make sense to get from here to there, right? So that's, that's what I mean by sort of openness about financials, like, you know, it's like, we just have to talk because this is a, it's a um, it's a tricky game. There's no guarantees on any side of the equation, um, and for us to be able to help, we have to understand where you are, where you're hoping to be, and then what we do with a lot of companies is we may get on, for instance, a small monthly retainer, right? So that it's like, look, we're not going to be able to do a lot in any given month. But if we all hold hands and trust each other and jump off the cliff together, right, over 12 months, over 24 months, these efforts are going to start to build and build and build. And we'll start to generate. And then as more revenue comes in, we can have another discussion. But it's at a level that you can afford. Um, if you're at the stage before that, that's what the previous points in my talk were about, is sort of these are the things I see people get wrong, right? It's like, there's plenty of web developers in town. Anyone can put a WordPress site up. Anyone can do Squarespace. Anyone can do those things. Like, it can happen, right? The question is, what is there? What's the message? What are you selling? Is it compelling? Do people understand it? Have you differentiated yourself from the other folks? And so that's stuff you can do for free. I tell people, like, get a, get a legal pad and a cup of coffee, and you can save yourself thousands, you know? Um, because it's not rocket science, but a lot of people just don't uh, disconnect and take that time to focus and do it. Yeah? I don't know if I'm going to this right, but in terms of scoreboards, you know, around, you at what point in the business development cycle does branding and the kind of work that you do guess fit? An ancillary question to that is, do you have people that come in and when you start working at the strategy level, mm -hmm. right, you kind of figure out if the, uh, their product really isn't viable or they really sort of go back to ground zero or, or the starting place or blank slate or whatever. Mm -hmm. do, do, you, do you get what I'm getting at? <clears throat> and where do customers Maybe they come to you because they're down the line, you have a well-developed product that, you know, where they've done their market research, they know it's a fit, and then they're just trying to sharpen up, in a sense, how they present themselves. It just is so interrelated that I'm trying to figure where do you go in? Yeah. Does that make any yeah. sense? Yeah, it does. And, and so the points at which we interact with clients a lot, right? One is legacy companies where the brands are transitioning between like one generation of owners and another. Uh, others are places where it's not working. Like a restaurant may come to us because they're not, the revenue is flat, you know, and they're not, you know, they had growth for the first X number of years and now they're flat, you know. Hey, we need to, to move the needle. You know, again, it's, it's so, so where people come to us is to solve a business problem, right? And so if you know you have a problem, that's a great point. And the problem may just be, hey, we're trying to open our first location. That's, you know, that's the problem, right? Um, or it may be, um, uh, we have been doing X. You know, we, we are known for construction in Louisiana. We need to get into Texas. Right? Doing the same thing we've been doing, but moving it to a different geographic location. Or it may be, we've been doing architecture and construction, and we're adding engineering. It's a new service to our same area. Right? So then, okay, how do we fold that into the story? How do we create that material? Yeah. 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 Yeah.
it's it's a restaurant. You don't know that it's going to be profitable right. until you, well, you know. Yeah. And and I always tell everyone, you know, no strategy survives contact with the enemy. You know, that's just the truth of it. You know, so basically, I always try to tell people, make sure that you're budgeting not just for your initial, but for your cyclical correction to find out where you were wrong. You know, everyone said they were going to come, but guess what? They, they don't come. So what do you do? Right? Now you need to up the market and budget. Maybe I got time for one more. Anyone has one? Otherwise, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't know if everyone can hear that. Sort of, you know, what's the, what's the process? It, it, tell me if I get this right. So, um, are there questions people can ask to make sure that the packaging or whatever they're doing, whatever you're doing to put your product in a different retail <coughs> space is actually doing what it's supposed to do? <coughs> Good question. Um, the number one answer, you know, it sounds straight, is like, you know, did the revenue go up? You know, if, if you change your packaging and the revenue went down, then that probably wasn't working, right? Um, the other thing, I'm a big fan of, you know, what's the low-hanging fruit? What's the stuff that you can test cheap yourself and just make sure you don't, like, walk into a wall, right? And some of that stuff, like, is, you know, we build everything in-house, like packaging and stuff like that, because you can't look at a PDF and be like, oh, I know what that looks like. You can't. And so... You know, you've got to look at it. How big is it? What's its real size? Does it actually hold the weight? And then, you know, when we were doing all the ProMaster stuff, right, we would go into local photography shops here, and we would bring our mock-ups of the package designs, and we'd put it on the wall and walk away from it, and then stand there 10 feet back. You know, does it hold up? Can you see it? Does it have the right presence? Can you see the logo? Do you understand what you're looking at? So I think road testing that kind of stuff um, is always helpful. And then, you know, the biggest thing I think is to play the insider-outsider game, which is to make sure, you know, all of you, whatever your product is, whatever your industry is, you know more about it probably than the people buying your products do, right? And this is a, this is a bias that we all have. So if you're in the construction business, you know more about construction than you do, than does the homeowner who's looking to hire a contractor, right? And so you tend to give too much information, too many features, too many bullet points, too much information. So we always sort of try to, to get people like, take it to your ideal audience, find out what they're looking for, you know? And you can do interesting, uh, one really interesting way of doing research on this kind of stuff, if it's not something that's sold online, for instance, go to all your competitors and read all of the negative reviews that you can, right? And not just to be happy because they're getting negative reviews, but the negative reviews of a competing product are showing you an opportunity to win. And it's free, right? There's just people out there in Ohio or somewhere being like, you know, I couldn't open the, you know, my grandmother got this and she couldn't open the package. Oh, that's interesting. Maybe if we make our package easier to open. Or guess what? Our package is already easy to open, but we didn't think to put that on there and say, hey, this is easy to open, right? Um, so that's another way to kind of check on things and see. So thank you very much. I uh, appreciate you listening. Thank you so much. So let's break for a couple of minutes. You guys feel like you need a quick break? Yeah, yeah like stretch your legs. Um, and then we will have um, our expert panel. Uh, we have six uh, successful folks uh, from Louisiana, uh, based in Louisiana, uh, to answer questions and discuss their, um, their, their glows and gripes um, and to talk about their successes and maybe some of their mistakes. Uh, so we can learn from uh, what they've done well and um, it'll be a great chance to ask questions and uh, listen to their story and their point of view. Uh, so stick around. That will be next and that is our last part of the program.